nations. If you would bow with me for our opening prayer. Thank you, God, for being such a good God. Thank you, God, for being such a mighty God. Thank you, God, for being such a marvelous God. Thank you for bringing us from a mighty long way. We thank you, God, that whatever journey it took us to get here, you covered us, oh God. You protected us, oh God. You stood with us. You kept us, oh God. And for that, we say thank you all today. God, we honor you all today. We reverence you all today. We lift your name high, oh God, for surely you are worthy of all the glory and the honor and the praise of today. God, we know that thanks is what you are due. We know that is what we ought to lift unto your holy name. We know that praises is what should be lifted up in this house. And when the praises go up, the blessings will come down. God, somebody needs you all today. Somebody's calling upon your holy name on today. Somebody needs a healing on today. Somebody needs a deliverance on today. Somebody needs power on today. Somebody needs comfort on today. Somebody needs direction on Somebody needs love on today. Somebody needs strength on today. Somebody just needs you on today, God. And so, God, I ask that whatever the needs are, you would provide in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you would strengthen the choir, oh God, and anoint their voices as they sing the songs of Zion on today. We ask, oh God, that you would anoint those in the pew, oh God, as they worship you on today. We ask that you would anoint the minstrel on today, oh God, as he plays the songs of Zion. We ask that you would anoint those who are doing the skit, oh God. I ask that you would allow them to give a tremendous performance on today. That we give glory to you and to your love. God, we just thank you on today for all that our eyes have seen. All that our ears have heard and all that our hearts have felt. And we ask that the Holy Spirit might have its way in this place on today. God, this is our prayer. We lift to you in Jesus' most precious holy name. We do pray. Let all the people of God say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to welcome you to Empowerment Liberation Cathedral, where we are a affirming church. We are an inclusive church. We are a church that celebrates LGBTQ Christians. We are a church that celebrates heterosexual Christians. We are a church that celebrates all of God's people. And so whoever you are, we want you to know that God loves you on today. We want you to know that God affirms you and we affirm you here at ELC. We always want to make sure that we let you know we are a church of praise, a people of prayer with a priestly leader. Somebody say it with me. We are a church of praise, a people of prayer with a priestly leader. Y'all always act like that's foreign when I ask y'all to say that. Somebody's going to get it. Somebody's going to come back with it and be excited about it. One more time, let us say we are a church of praise, a people of prayer with a priestly leader. Amen, amen. Thank God. Somebody tweet out and post it on Facebook and said, let your friends know on Instagram that we are live right now. They can tune in to our worship service. Y'all let the people know that we are on. We always want you to keep your phones out. Don't put your phones away. We want you to tweet out anything that uh, stirs your spirit. Post it on Facebook. Send it out to Instagram. We want you to stay connected. And as God speaks to you, speak to the people who are connected to you. And so at this time, we want you to stand, find a couple of people, let them know God is good all the time. And if they are willing, take a selfie with them and uh, post it to Facebook, post it to Instagram, post it to Twitter, and Snapchat. Would you stand at this time and find a couple of people, let them know God is good all the time. So at this time, we do want to um, read our affirmation, and then we will have a special presentation. Um, hopefully they are ready. Um, we will have a special presentation. Um, but let us read our affirmation. Um, I still hear them uh, moving around while we hear the back. So let us read together. 
I love who I am. I am who God created me to be. I must be me at all times. I live my truth. I walk authentically. God loves me and is reflected in me. I declare that I am blessed. I declare that I am healed. I declare that I am saved. I declare that I am worthy of all that God has for me. Great things are happening in my life. Great things are happening in my relationships. Great things are happening around me and I am surrounded by positivity. God is prospering me on a new level. There is no failure in God. I am not limited by my race, by my gender, by my orientation, nor by my faith. All things are possible with God. Amen, amen, amen.
I do believe that there is a word from the Lord. Oh, we're running a little bit behind today. The word of the Lord reads, And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out, took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she rose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. I want to tag this particular text by calling it call it forth. I'm going to 
suggest today that we begin to call it forth. Would you bow with me for a moment of prayer? Gracious, holy, just God, we thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. We thank you, oh God, for all that you have given and poured out upon us. We thank you for every situation and every circumstance that we find ourselves in so that we might have an opportunity to know you even better, to see the power of God, to see the hand of God moving in our lives. Now, God, center us in this place, settle us in this place, help us to be in a place where we will receive what thus said the Lord. Open our ears, oh God, open our hearts and our minds and our souls and our spirits so that we might be fed by the Holy Spirit on today. God bless this word, breathe upon this word, and let the word connect with your people. This is my prayer. I lift to you in Jesus' most precious holy name I do pray. Let the people of God say amen. I won't be before you long. There is a scripture that informs us to speak things that aren't as though they were. I believe somebody today has some stuff you need to call for regarding your situation. You see, what I like about God, church, is that he has given us power, meaning you ain't got to sit there and take a beating unless you just want to. You can take charge over your own situation with the power that God has given you to tread upon the heads of serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. We want to make sure that we are letting the devil and all of his imps know that we have the power of the Most High God. So whatever is going on in your life, it's time to use your power. It's time to command some things to turn around, command some things to leave, command some things to move, command some things to come forward so that you can have what God says you can have. Here in the text, this is clearly a situation of Jesus not being moved by the actions of others. Jesus believed one thing about this situation, and no matter what the other people that were there thought, no matter what the other people that were there said, Jesus stood firm in his belief, and he stood firm on the power of God. So the question becomes, how have you allowed others to sway you? What have you done because of other folks' opinions or not done? If we're honest with ourselves, I need y'all to stay with me. We have all sought out opinions from others. Let's be honest, we've all sought out opinions from others. And sometimes those opinions were what caused us to not do something we knew we were supposed to do. I came to tell you, church, public opinion and public perception does not always work in your favor. But when it doesn't, and you have God on your side, I came to tell you, you'll prevail every time. Somebody needs to hear me today. When you have God on your side, you will prevail every time. Here Jesus shows up at the house where the people have informed him that the little girl has died. The Bible says, and they all wept and bewailed her. But he said, weep not, she is not dead, but sleeping. I want to suggest that there are three things you must understand when you are preparing to call things forth. Sometimes you got to one, shake it. Two, fake it in order to three, make it. Somebody needs to write that down today. You got to shake it and fake it in order to make it. Now, now when the people where you are appear so distraught uh, that they cannot hear the truth that you are expressing to them, uh, nor can they receive the guidance you are giving them, uh, then sometimes uh, you got to shake it. Somebody hear me today. Uh, sometimes you got to shake it. Uh, shake their tears, church. Shake their unbelief. Uh, shake their doubt. Shake their negativity. Uh, shake it, shake it, shake it. Uh, Y'all know how people can be anyway. Uh, you're telling them the situation is not what they think. Uh, you're encouraging them that it will turn around. Uh, you're telling them they can come out and they can prosper and do well. Uh, but they are so busy looking at the situation, uh, allowing the circumstance to consume them, uh, that they cannot hear you. Uh, they cannot hear the 
God in you. They cannot hear the Holy Spirit speaking and declaring some things in their situation. Here in the text, Jesus, the Son of God, church, was telling them that the girl was not dead. Jesus now was saying she was not dead. Jesus was telling them the situation was not over. Jesus was telling them the opportunity. Your opportunity is now present and on the scene. But the people were so consumed with what their own minds were telling them. They were consumed with what their own eyes had seen. They were consumed with what the crowd there had agreed was their reality. Anybody know a crowd can agree what reality is in that situation? And so these people were full of tears. And sometimes after you break down about a situation, after you assessed it, and you gone into give up mode, you can't recognize opportunity when it reveals itself. Some of y'all have got to get to the point where you can shake some things off today. you got to shake off the devil, what the devil has told you. Shake off what the devil has shown you. Shake off what the devil has surrounded you with in your environment. Shake off what the devil has weighed you down with in your life. Shake off what the devil has dumped in your household and in your family. Shake off what the devil has dumped in your spirit. Shake off all the negativity, church. I came to tell you, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Dust yourself off. Wipe yourself off. Brush yourself off. Determine you. Once again, I want to suggest that there are three things you must understand when you're preparing to call things forth. Sometimes you got to one, shake it, two, fake it, in order to three, make it. Now, if you can shake it, I believe you'll be ready to move to the next level in your situation. Looking at this pericope, Jesus came at the request of someone else. Jesus is here to be a blessing. Jesus is here to allow the people to experience the power and presence of God. Many times, church, public perception and public opinion will be so far away from the truth that it can throw you off as well. The Bible says, and they laughed him to scorn knowing that she was dead. Church, they didn't just laugh at him, read the text there, but they laughed at him to ridicule him and make him appear as if he did not know what he was talking about. They laughed at him to make him appear as if he did not know anything about the situation. They laughed at him to make him appear as if they knew more than he did. They laughed at him to make him appear as if he was a false prophet and was not sent by God. How far they were from the truth. Has anybody in here ever had your desires laughed at? Have you ever had your dreams laughed at? Have you ever had your hopes laughed at? Have you ever had your love laughed at? If you have, you know that sometimes you got to ignore the haters. Sometimes you got to ignore the mockers and fake it until you make it. I came to tell somebody today, you got to do what 
what you got to do for you. Somebody needs to hear me today. Yeah. Do what you got to do for your family. Yeah. Do what you got to do for your sanity. Yeah. Do what you got to do to save your career. Yeah. Do what you got to do to save your marriage or your relationship. Yeah. Do what you got to do to stay with the Lord. Yeah. Sometimes you simply have to fake it. Yeah. Meaning walk like it's already done. Somebody needs to get this. Huh? Walk like it's already happened. Huh? Walk like it's already been released in your life. Huh? Talk like you already got your breakthrough. Huh? Talk like you already got your healing. Huh? Talk like you already reaping the benefits of heaven. Huh? Talk like you already got what you need. Huh? Talk like you've been restored huh? and it's sealed in the deal right now. Huh? Look like you already on the next level. Huh? Look like you already Look like you know what God can do. Look like God has already turned it around for your good. Somebody needs to know you got to begin to look like it, move like it, breathe like it, and fake it until you arrive where you're going. Somebody needs to hear me. Fake it until the door opens. Fake it until that yes answer comes forth. Fake it until that thing which you're waiting on manifests in the earthly realm. Somebody needs to learn about faking it all today. Jesus, I'm sure he heard them laughing. Jesus, I'm sure he heard all of their negative comments. Jesus, I'm sure he knew all of their thoughts. He knew their plots and plans. But he had to fake it. Meaning pretend as if that did not bother him. In order and pretend as if the laughs did not disturb him. And in order to be able to go ahead and do what he was sent there to do that day, he had to ignore the ignorant, that's the way I want to say it, until the power of heaven manifested in the situation and was able to shame the devil who showed up on the scene as well. Anybody know the devil will show up when the power of God shows up as well? But you see, church, I, I got to let somebody know, uh, being human uh, allows you to feel some kind of way uh, when people talk about you. Uh, I don't want us to be, have any misconceptions here. Uh, being human uh, allows you to feel some kind of way uh, when people laugh at you. Uh, being human uh, allows you to feel some kind of way uh, when people don't believe in you uh, and don't receive what you're telling them uh, that you know God has called you uh, and anointed you to do. Uh, being a human uh, allows you to feel some kind of way. Uh, when folks stab you in the back, uh, when folks undermine you, uh, when folks sabotage your work, uh, when folks smile in your face uh, and double talk you the whole time, uh, being a human uh, allows you to feel some kind of way. Uh, but I'm telling you today, uh, you got to rise above those feelings. Uh, you got to rise above that. Uh, fake it and shake it uh, so that you can walk in your purpose uh, and fulfill your destiny. Uh, fake it and shake it, church, uh, until God shows up uh, and shames the devil uh, in your situation. Uh, somebody needs to understand that they, it's okay to fake it and shake it. Uh, it's okay to fake it and shake it uh, because while you're doing that, you're waiting on the Lord. I want to suggest once again there are three things you must understand when you're preparing to call things forth. Sometimes you've got to one, shake it, two, fake it, in order to three, make it. Now if you can shake what the people are doing and fake it to the point where you don't allow their laughs to stop your purpose, then I believe you will succeed with your call. Like I said, Jesus was asked to come to this house. Jesus was brought into this situation. So he was not there on his own recognizance. Anybody ever had someone to call you and ask you about something? And then once you give them your opinion, they go into rejection mode. They tell you how wrong you are. They tell you how off you are in your thinking, and they even laugh about what you have said. And the whole time, all you can do is think about the fact that they call you. They ask you for your opinion. Church, we got to learn not to allow people and where they are 
to pull us away from our purpose and our destiny. The Bible says that he put them all out. Now, sometimes you just got to take charge and take authority over the situation. Now, no matter who they are, no matter who they think that they are, no matter what they say, if God has sent you to do something, if God has purposed you to do something, if God has given you an assignment, don't allow the people to hinder what God is trying to do on behalf of somebody else in that situation. Let me help somebody today. Folks get the devil in them and start blocking what God is trying to do. Folks get the devil in them and they don't want to see you and nobody else get blessed. Folks get the devil in them. Y'all act like y'all don't know about it. Folks get the devil in them and they don't want to see you and anybody else be able to have God prevail in your situation. Jesus, I'm glad to say, never allowed people to block what God was doing. He never allowed them to hinder his purpose. He never allowed them to stop somebody else's destiny. So he put them out. Y'all need to hear me today. He removed every negative spirit from his presence and moved forward with what his purpose was that day. I like to say he shifted the atmosphere and set the atmosphere. Some of you have to do that in order to be able to call things forth. You gotta shift the atmosphere and set the atmosphere. Shift it by shaking it and faking it. Set it by putting anything that's not like God out. Anyone who does not have God's purpose and God's intention, put them out and away from your presence. Somebody needs to hear me again. Once you have shifted the atmosphere and set the atmosphere, you can thus call forth the blessing. The Bible says, and took her, he took her by the hand and called, saying, May arise. And it says her spirit came again and she rose straightway. I need y'all to stay with me because I know the enemy would want to steal this word from you. Church, I came to tell somebody that today. Simply, you can make it with the Lord. Somebody needs to hear me today. You can make it with the Lord. What is clear here, church, is that this little girl's life was in the hands of the Lord. There were people outside, outside that had given up on her. There were people outside who didn't want to believe that things could turn around. There were people outside who laughed at the possibility that there was still something else for this little girl. There were people outside who could not believe she would rise from where she was at that moment. There were people outside who didn't believe the authority that was vested in Jesus Christ that day. And in my opinion, that's why they were outside. Anybody realize that if you would move the non-believers, if you would remove the haters and instigators, folk who don't believe in you, folk who don't believe in your destiny, folk who don't believe in your anointing, folk who don't believe in your purpose, if you would move them to the outside, away from your inner circle, your whole life would change. It would change for your good. Somebody needs to get that today. Move them out, put them out, and see your life change for your good. So, so Jesus being confident in who he was and, and understanding his purpose said, in spite of everything that's going on here, I, I'm going to still call for the blessing. I came to tell somebody today, there may be some people around you that don't believe, that can't receive, that are negligent to shift. Therefore, you got to trust God to call forth your healing. Trust God to call forth your new life. Trust God to call forth your next level. Trust God to call forth your anointing. Trust God to call forth your power. Trust God to call forth your healing. I don't know about you, but in the midst of my trusting, 
I trust God with the power that he has given me to call for some things in the lives of others. And if you know somebody who is struggling today, you ought to call for their strength. If they are sick, church, you ought to call for their healing. If they are down, church, you ought to call for the, them being lifted up. If they are confused, church, you ought to call for their steps being
listen, should I keep going? <laughs> Church, the deacons and our members would love to say happy, happy anniversary. We thank you for your vision. We thank you for standing by. We thank you for praying with her, for her, just being there while this new birth has formed. Empowerment Liberation Cathedral will always be our home forever and remain in our hearts. We love you ladies with all our hearts and souls. I want to say thank you so much to everybody. Um, we love you. You know you all are awesome. You all are very special to us. I did want to give my wife these red roses behind me um, and just let her know how special, super special she is. I think she's deserving of the roses. Um, but thank you so much, church family, ELC Nation, uh, ELC, for all that you have done in these last two years that we've been here together. And uh, I expect many more. And thank you so much, beautiful wife, for singing that lovely song. I see my deacon is stepping back. Uh, thank you so much for singing that lovely song. I'm so glad that God has given you voice again. We know that uh, you've been through a lot. And uh, sometimes when you go through, you're not sure what you're going to come out with. And so I'm just glad that God has given you voice again to use your gifts. And I'm always blessed when you sing anything. We thank you for the 
power.